Hey everyone and welcome back to the next episode in the Android programming practice series where we're making our fancy little tip calculator. So in this one we're going to be linking the activities to their associated layout files uh, so we can actually get some sort of a semblance of a working application going. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and make the result activity which is going to be associated with the result XML file here. So I'll go ahead and do that now. Let's go into the package that we created and then we will create a new class. We're going to call this result browse. We're going to say activity in the Android app package is going to be our parent class. And we have on create bundle saved instance state and we want to do the same as we did in main. We want to do or we want to leverage the method set content view r dot layout dot result. There we go. So whenever this activity is launched, we'll dis display results. Now we also will have to add this activity to the manifest, like we always have to do when we make a new activity. So we'll do it here, and we'll just say Android name gets org dot academicode. So I'll write there for us. Uh, there's, there's no need to add the intent filter here because we're going to be explicitly launching this activity from our host activity main. And you'll, you'll understand in a moment. So we go back into main here and we now need to work with all the, all the widgets that we have on the screen, all the views we have on the screen in main.xml. So we have this edit text and these three buttons. These are the components that we'll have to control in main.xml. So let's go ahead and get references to them first. We'll get the edit text first and then we'll do the three buttons. We'll do button 10, and then we've got button 15 and button 20. All right, and now that we have got references to those elements, we need to we need to assign them to the UI components that they represent. So we have let's do the edit text first. If you remember, we went over this in one of the episodes in the fundamental series. So we're casting to edit text because we're finding a view by ID, and that would be edit text one. We know that because it appeared in the contextual menu, but we can always go back in here and check that, in fact, we are looking for the ID edit text one. That's correct. Good. Now let's do the same for the buttons. Let's do button 10 gets button oh, find view by ID R dot ID and we've got button 10 here. Oh, I'm sorry, I believe it's called tip 10. Yep, there we go. That's the ID for the button that is represented by this view here, the 10%. Just to verify, we have a uh, tip 10 here. That's the ID we're looking for. And then we will copy this, we'll copy this and place it twice more. Use the same syntax for the remaining buttons. So we have 20 and 15. Great. So we now have, re we've successfully hooked the views into the activity. Now we need to get the functionality going. So as you saw in the in the Android Fundamentals episode interacting with views when you're interacting with buttons you use click listeners and your natural inclination would be to do something like this and we would do we would call the set on click listener method and we'd we'd uh, then make a new anonymous inner click listener and you can do that if you'd like but since we're going to be doing something similar with all the buttons, it just makes more sense to have a single implementation of the click listener. So we're going to do something tricky. We are going to go ahead and implement the on click listener interface in our activity and then just pass the activity object 
in to each of the buttons as the associated click listener. So we'll do implement on click listener and then we'll have to hit control one to get the error completion dialog to appear. We want to add unimplemented methods that gives us this on click method which we can use to put the functionality in there that we want to call whenever that method is reached and then we will just assign the click listener to be this representing the object the, uh, the, the activity in which this view is located so we'll do this once again for 15 and 20 and, ne and then whenever any of those buttons are clicked this on click method is going to be reached and we can do whatever we want in this method to satisfy the expectation of the user so what we're going to do just to test things is we're actually just going to log we're going to log uh, we're going to pass something to the log so that we can find it in our uh, in our log cat down here and then see that the association with the click listener has been, has been made correctly so I'll just call the tag tag and then the message will be button clicked and this log class is just part of the Android package so it's, uh, it's really convenient to have uh, let me remove this filter here we're gonna add a new filter in logcat so we can easily see anything that we pass with this tag we're gonna call it tip calculator and the log tag we want to use is TAG in caps much like this here and then when we run the application we will see it appear and then when we click on any button you see the button clicked text appear here and that's just a really convenient way to test this uh, this log functionality I'm actually gonna do a, a quick tip on this I'll link it in the video here because it's, it's really useful to to be able to leverage this log when you need to so we've got a head start on clicking the buttons and the components interacting with them next we have to launch the result activity and then uh, we're gonna calculate the tip well I guess we'll I guess we'll calculate the tip first launch the uh, launch the result activity after we pass tip information to result activity and then of course we'll launch the result activity so I just have things in comments now because I'm gonna leave this part for the next episode but I wanted to comment it here because I want you to try doing it on your own now before we before you reach the next episode just so that you can see if you have a a solid grasp on how to use intents which we covered in the in the fundamental series but that's it for now folks once again I appreciate your time and thank you for watching the video if you've got any feedback leave it in the comment section below I'll I'll see you all in the next video